On my recent travel to Sicily, I got excited, of course, like everybody else, about Sicilian food. And I thought to myself, since I am in Mildura, which is like a little Sicily in terms of vegetation and, uh, and the things we grow here, why not make a cassata tradizionale, cassata alla siciliana. After all, here in Mildura we have a lot of mandorle almonds. They're not quite the same as the one in Noto where I was, which really tastes of almond. But, you know, we grow 5% of the world production of, all, of, um, of um, almonds here. And uh, so we can go on without further ado. Excuse the industrial uh, <laughs> presentation of things here. You don't have to have any of these. In fact, when you do the, the cassata, which is like a cupola, like a mound, you can do it inside a bowl like that. But we have got the silk pad here and we'll proceed like that. Okay, Stefano and I, is Stefano as well, have just uh, passed some ricotta through the sieve. This is the best way to do it. Preferably get some sheep ricotta or some goat ricotta. It is available in Australia. So let's go, Stefano. We got the ricotta here, which we have passed, plain ricotta. We got good chocolate, good quality chocolate, just chopped up. And of course, some toasted almond flakes, but you can use an almond in its um, natural form, just toast it a little bit and chop it up. Of course, to make a cassata, you need a sponge, a homemade sponge, a nice, oops, a nice soft homemade sponge that's quite fine. You need some sugar syrup and we'll show you as we go along. Andiamo. First thing, mix the chocolate and the almond in the ricotta. There is a, probably enough there for six or seven serves. We're going to give you the quantity separately so you can chop and change and do whatever you like in your own house. So this is the very traditional recipe. If you don't believe me, you can go to the internet and you'll see hundreds of Sicilian mamas doing exactly the same, just as we are doing. So it, when you think about it, there is a certain sophistication in, in cassata. Uh, the very idea is sophisticated. The execution is fairly primitive and quite peasant-like. So you've got to have a nice uh, balance here of almond and chocolate chips, real chocolate. We use coverture, quite bitter. I don't like sweets that are too sweet. So I'm not very Sicilian in that respect. I'll taste. And the chocolate will bring the sweetness to as you eat it. Initially, it's not very sweet. If you look at traditional recipes, they are, for our Australian palate now, horrendously sweet. But, hey, if you like sugar, you add more sugar. The next step, Stefano, stop fiddling, is you slice the um, sponge. Now, you can buy sponge, but we will give you the recipe for this as well. Important thing, is that you have a very fine and delicate uh, sponge. And with the sponge, you line the, um, well, that's called a sill pad, but as I said, you can do it, you can actually do it in a large bowl like that. Make one single one instead of small serves. And the result is the same thing. You can cut slices like that, which is probably more traditional than doing it this way. Now with this device, we are just measuring out what in fact will become the, um, the, um, the bottom, because when that is reversed out, as I will show you in a minute, um, you need um, to place a lid. Now, a little bit of uh, sugar syrup. This is plain sugar syrup, but if you want to, you can put some um, liqueur in it. Um, anything that's orange-based suits me. I'm very much a, um, um, a, a cook in a town that is uh, dominated by citrus. So anything that's got a little bit of citrus in it is um, right up my alley. So now start to fill the sponge with the, um, with the ricotta. So some more um, syrup. Just to keep it moist, you want your sponge to be delicate, quite fine. Look at it. It's an extremely, if you look at champagne, when it's good, it's got a fine bubble. If you look at a good sponge, it must be delicate, fragrant. It has to, you know, not smell of eggs, obviously, but 
you've got to know that it's a, a fine, delicate product. So here we have our base for the cassata. And there it is, nice, lovely little mound. Of course, this should rest in the fridge for a couple of hours and we are ahead of the game here and we have it ready made. Arrivederci Turkey. Yeah. You can see the lines of the, of the sponge, but this will now be covered by a fondant. Here we go. Prego. Now this is fondant which you can buy ready made, just add a little bit of pistachio food coloring. However, we are going to show you how to actually make a glassa traditionally from scratch. So you've got two options. You either do this yourself, and we'll show you, or you buy a bit of fondant, and you simply add a little bit of pistachio food coloring. If you want to do things properly, you do it from scratch. So there's 150 mils of water here with 250 grams of sugar. And this is in order to make a glassa, homemade glassa with, for, the, um, for the dessert. Of course, to this, when it reaches 130 degrees, and you can measure it either with experience or a food thermometer, you add 250 grams of our trusted almond meal. Pour it in, keep the heat fairly high. You don't want to crystallize that sugar in there. Sometimes when you cook sugar and water, it crystallizes quite easily. So keep the temperature nice and steady. Now a tiny bit of that mad food coloring. The next step is to work this mixture on the bench. Now, if you have a marble bench or a marble something, that would be the best. Otherwise, you have to try to make your surface cold. And one trick for doing that is to place a few bags of ice on your surface to make it cold, so that will enable you to go ahead and do the next step. And then you work it on a very cold bench. Now, to get it to this consistency and to be cold, to get it to Play-Doh consistency, you have to keep with this action for about half an hour. That's the catch, which is why it's terrific when you've got somebody at home. In the olden days, you had the mamas at home cooking, and they may afford to spend an afternoon doing this. But, uh, uh, in the modern day, if you are in a hurry, the fondant is uh, just as good, I can assure you. But if you want to do things properly, do it this way. This um, colour makes me laugh a little bit because it is rather horrid, but if you see it in Sicily, it is just like that. Um, there's a certain theatricality about the whole thing, which I don't mind at all. So the thinner you can roll it out, the better it is. Perfect. Now we are going to cut the fondant out. As I said, there are the lurid colors they use for this thing, but I, I, I find it quite uh, a lot of fun. So there it is. Now we got to the completion of the dessert with the decorations and the rest of it. Vamos, andiamo. So we're going to do a little bit of icing sugar and water to make a little decorative ball to go on top. So that's icing sugar, water, I hold it for you. This orange is being boiled, orange uh, rind that is, it's being boiled, dried and then cooked in sugar for about 15 minutes. So it becomes nice and sweet, but still tastes of orange. So you put that on top. So it really is a celebration of citrus and almonds and um, our local ingredients. And now to finish, we have a little bit of chocolate ganache. Basically, this is chocolate over bain marie there with a tiny, tiny little bit of cream, just to melt it and give it a bit of gloss. I like the chocolate, which is inside, to be outside as well, sort of like a little, this will recall what's inside. Go for it, Stefano, before it solidifies. If you want to, you can also add, if you like it, yet another famous Sicilian ingredient with which I'm going to make a pasta, by the way.
but um, you can put a little pistachio nut here on the side just to, just to remind yourself um, of, the orig of the country, of the region where this dish comes from. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>